Hi, this is Joe from Mapamundi, and today I'd like to discuss a topic that I have talked about before in the past, but today I'd like to expand upon it a little bit because it's a topic that is very interesting for me, and that is the relationship between the Germanic languages. So as I'm studying Old English right now, I'm starting to notice a lot of connections between Old English and the other Germanic languages. Um, obviously, they're very easy to see in modern English as well for somebody who studies historical linguistics. But the further back you go into time, the easier it is to see how these languages uh, come from one another because they come from a common source, which is the Proto-Germanic language. Uh, so the modern languages we have today, English, Danish, uh, Dutch, German, Swedish, Norwegian, Icelandic, and Scots, if we're counting that as a language, Frisian, uh, those languages all come from the same source, which is ultimately the Proto-Germanic uh, language which is a language that existed uh, that is not really attested. We don't really have so many copies of um, writing of the language, but with the comparative method of historical linguistics, it's very easy to see how these languages are similarly related and to get some kind of idea of what Proto-Germanic might have sounded like back in that time period. So when we look at Old English, it's kind of easy to see how English and German are related to one another. And English is a language that has changed a lot over the past um, thousand years. Uh, this is due to influence from outside languages. Uh, it's due to the fact that English has spread over um, a wide area of the world due to colonization. And um, those two factors uh, have changed the English language a lot in comparison to other Germanic languages. That's not to say that other Germanic languages have not changed. They also have changed. Uh, some have changed like pretty drastically. Um, but I would say when we look at Middle English compared to Modern English, or when we look at Middle Dutch compared to Modern Dutch, uh, or when we look at um, Old Norse compared to Icelandic, the differences between those two um, time periods of language, it's a, little bit, um, it's a little bit less strong than it is between um, Old English and Modern English. And in order to illustrate that, I've shown some words that are um, important in all these languages, which are the personal pronouns, uh, words like I, me, you, him, her. Uh, by showing a comparison of those words and showing you the Old English forms, it is easy to see how Old English is um, a form that is even more closely related with the other older versions of these uh, Germanic languages. So first, if we look at the Proto-Germanic uh, for the word I, me, mine, um, the dative which would be to me, uh, that's collapsed in the English language into the same word. We have me, to me, for me. Uh, but in other Germanic languages, we see that it has not collapsed into the same uh, case. And we actually see that it is two distinct words depending on how the word is used. Uh, so if we look at modern English, we have I, me, we have my or mine, and we have to me. Um, and then if we look at German, which is the other Western uh, Germanic language that I chose to put on here, we have ich, mich, mein, and mir. Um, comparing that to Old English, it's a little easier to see how we might um, relate those two languages, English and German, because if we look at Old English, the form for I is ich. Um, for accusative, we have me, or we also have mech. Me is a little bit more recent Old English, and mech is a little bit... Um, older Old English. Uh, the genitive we have mean, and the dat dative we have may. So we can see how those words um, are related to German, right? Ich looks like ich, um, mech looks like mich, mean looks like mein, right? And um, we can even see in Shakespearean times that that mine is used in place of my when the following word begins with a vowel, right? You can see in Shakespeare things like mine eyes, um, mine own heart or something like that. Uh, interestingly enough in Old English we can see when mech goes to me and dative goes to me that that already is starting this kind of um, collapse of the case system and the dative and accusative are now becoming the same word being used. In Norwegian we can see actually the same thing happening where the accusative and dative they do become the same uh, word essentially. Uh, they're indicated in a different way, where uh, I in Norwegian is jeg, uh, accusative is my, dative is my, and if you want to say to me, in a lot of cases you would probably say til mig, uh, which is to me, which is the same as English. Uh, the genitive is min, uh, it can also be mina or mit, 
um, depending on the gender of the thing that's being possessed. And we can see that Norwegian and Icelandic, they both come from Old Norse, but the Icelandic versions of the words are much more similar to Old Norse than Norwegian, even though Norwegian and Icelandic are both um, in the same branch of Norse languages. Norwegian has been kind of changed a lot by um, interaction with Danish especially and uh, Swedish as well. So we can see in Icelandic that those words, the nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, like um, mean and mjær, uh, they are really similar to the Old Norse versions. The only difference is that those final G sounds are K sounds in Old Norse. And if we go back to the original form in Proto-Germanic, we can see that um, these forms like ek and mek, uh, they're not really so different from how they are in Proto-Germanic. One strange thing that you might have noticed is that the dativ or the dative in Proto-Germanic is this word mis uh, or mir. Uh, we're n I'm not really sure how it was pronounced per se, but that sound underwent uh, a process called rhoticization, which means oftentimes uh, a za or a da or a la or a na, or even in Latin we can see a sa, it becomes a, um, a ra sound, right? So that's how we get mjar in Icelandic from the dative Proto-Germanic mis. And in general, those English words, they do resemble the Proto-Germanic forms pretty, pretty closely, I would say. Things start to get a little bit different when we start comparing modern English uh, with the word you. Um, in modern English, the word you is really a, a multifaceted word. We use it to talk to one person. We use it to talk to multiple people. Um, it's our subject, you are. Uh, it's our object, I see you. It's our... Um, dative, I can say, to you. Um, and when we look at other Germanic languages, we see a large deviation from that. When in German, we have du, dich, dein, dir. In Norwegian, we have du, dai, din, dai. In Icelandic, we have thu, thin, thjar. Um, so how did that happen and why did that happen? Well, if we look at English from the Shakespearean times, we can see that the words that we use in the singular are thou, the, thine, right? And something happened in the English language where you was the plural way of addressing people and it was also the formal way of addressing people, it was the polite way of addressing people. And at a certain point in time, uh, the polite form started to be used in the singular with any old person. It didn't really matter whether you had to be formal or not. So these forms like thou and thee and thine um, they disappeared in the uh, English language, in modern English language. We still see it used in Shakespeare where people are trying to be kind of funny or old fashioned, but it really is uh, gone for all intents and purposes in the English language. So if we compare Old English to German, we can see that the similarity between the, those words is, is much greater. Where in Old English I have thu, I have the, I have thin and the. In German, thu, du, 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 in Icelandic, um, those words are really, really so similar. The, the matching sounds between du and du and, and thu, uh, it's really so similar. <clears throat> we can see this collapse again in Norwegian between the accusative and the dative where we have die and die, in Icelandic I have fjar, and in German I have dir. And we can see again that that comes from a z sound in Proto-Germanic that this thys sound became a thir sound or dir sound, that that rhoticism happened going from Proto-Germanic into the modern Germanic languages. Things start to get quite messy when you start looking at the third person pronouns. And the reason for that is that not only Old English, but also Proto-Germanic had a lot of different ways of um, expressing third person pronouns. There were a lot of different deitic pronouns you could use. For example, you could have a strong that, or a weaker that, or you could have he, and the forms that we inherited in the Proto-Germanic languages for like he and him and they and them, they all come from different versions of those words. And that's why there's a little bit less um, correspondence or matching between those uh, Germanic languages. Uh, for example, the word for they in English, I have they, them, their, them, which looks really similar to Norwegian and Icelandic. I have de, them, deres, them, or in Icelandic, I have theira and theim, uh, tha, thau. Uh, so it's not so different from modern English. But when I look at old English, the forms are pretty different. I have hie, 
hie, hiora, him, uh, so that is pretty different and the reason why it's so different is that the modern English words they and them and there they actually are an influence from um, Norse languages being in England at that time because of um, you know Viking invadings and Dane law and all that kind of influence from Danish and um, Scandinavian uh, languages. In German, the words for they are sie, sie, and I have ihr and ihnen, um, and we can see that those come from a different group of um, Proto-Germanic pronouns. So I hope you enjoyed that video showing how the Germanic languages are related to one another. Uh, it's something that I'm going to talk about more in the future, but I thought this would be a good introduction to show how they're so really similar to one another. Um, they're not quite as similar as Romance languages are when we compare them because the Romance languages were kind of bound together uh, for a long period of time by the Roman Empire and Latin, um, and the Germanic tribes were not really united in that kind of way by any kind of one empire. Uh, but they still are very similar to one another. This Old English that I showed today, it's from sometime around the 800s. Uh, and if we looked at Old English from the 800s um, and whatever language was being spoken in German at that time, Old German from the 800s, the similarities between the two languages would be even greater probably. Um, I'm not sure if somebody's done a study on this, but it's curious to think about uh, how easily people in England at the time period would have understood people from Scandinavia at that time period given that they are from the same language family and um, they were different languages by that time period already but very similarly related languages and I'm not sure if anyone's ever kind of like looked into that to see what the um, writing from the time period says about how they viewed one another's languages. So that's all for today. Um, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos just like this one in the future, subscribe to my channel Mapamuni Languages to see a new video coming out every Friday.